All right, I'm in the Winter Sun Tournament. I'm in the opening round of the Rookie Division. I'm in my 77 account. This is my main account. I played a, a practice opening round. I played nine holes yesterday in my practice account. So I'm going to go out there today and let's check it out. Let's, let me refresh my memory with what hole number one looks like. All right, I'm doing the max overpower hook. Now yesterday, I think the wind was blowing kind of like in this direction. It was a headwind, but also a side wind. So it might have been more pure side, but it was definitely in this direction here. Yesterday, I actually put a little too much. It was either, I, when I do max overpower hook shots, I don't like to do, I want to set, I want to try and set those shots up so that I can do max curl. It's just easier to replicate that. And so I over curled it so I can help myself out by not putting as much side spin on. So I'm only going to use two side spin. And it's hard to, the last time we played this was before they came out with these four side spin balls, so the numbers are a little different. I'm going to bring in a kingmaker. See if I have any kingmaker lookalikes in here. Maybe. Maybe. Taking an extra mile, sniper. All right, here we roll. Let's go have some fun today. Win, lose, draw, doesn't matter. We're, I'm having fun. That's the whole thing. If we can get an opponent. Maybe. Here, wait a second. I, I found this yesterday. Let's see if I still have it on here. Elevator music. Here we go. Oh, that's not good elevator music. That's better elevator music. Yeah, I really like this new tier system. It's so easy to get matches here. It's like the good old days. All right, come on. Do I gotta pause the video in order to get a match? I, every single person I know is in tier three, so it seems like there would be uh, quite a few people. Maybe. Just give me a replay because we're not winning anything anyway, so we can't win chess unless we win outright on the course. All right. Let me put on two. into that range right there it's three four I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a, a two ring pull that's that's a 20% wind adjustment and I got all of it yeah that's a good line right there it's a good line that's exactly what I'm looking for right there. Change that side spin to two. Now the deal there is, is that that starting spot where I was at, I was about one ring into the third cut of the rough. That starting spot's totally different if the wind is blowing, if we're getting any kind of tailwind. Because if you're getting any kind of tailwind, you're actually getting pushed and it'll actually push you in front of that sand trap. And so the setup has to be totally different. During the practice session, I played this hole five, six times, and I was, and I luckily got different wind. Let's see what my opponent's gonna do here. They're trying to, they're just gonna do a hook. They're gonna do a half hook. I, I have no idea how these shots. I see people do this, and I'm always mystified. Like, what the hell are you doing there, dude? All right, I guess that's what they were doing. All right, this is no give me right here. I 
Man, I really don't like it when that ball guide's appearing and disappearing. Getting it perfect. See if I got my adjustment right and if the ball guide was <clears throat> telling me the truth and the wind was a factor from there. It pushed me over back to the cup. I, when I'm in that distance right there, my MO is, is that half the cup is four miles per hour. And so with a three, seven wind, I wanted to stay within the cup. So I was right on the left hand edge inside the cup and you can see the wind pushed me back to the flagpole. Yes, you can do a ring from there. I, You can do ring measurements from there. I've just played long enough. I think a lot of times when you get up really close to the green like that, it's more about feel, having faith in your club, taking those shots a lot. Let's see if my opponent can get in the hole. Get in the hole. game good luck all right that was hole number one let's go check out hole number two now i really want to hit this freaking hole perfect i haven't been it perfect all week coming into this and i think i'm right there so what i'm going to do is a sniper nav about five backspin I'm dialing it up to the cup and a 15% wind adjustment. 1.15 times whatever the wind is divided by one. All right, I'm bringing a sniper and a navigator. Let's take a nav and a sniper. That's all I need. That's all I need. Off we roll. Into the wild blue yonder. Off we roll. I know. That kind of singing voice, I don't want to quit my day job. If I can get an opponent. This is going to be, this is a recurring thing ever since they came out with this new bracketing system. I'm trying to get an opponent has become it's like the, when the game first came out it was in 2017 and then in the summer of 2018 they changed the bracketing system they changed how people were matched up because prior to that you could go out there and play a match with 35 trophies and play against somebody that was a max trophy player and they changed that and when they did it became very difficult sometimes it, it, they worked it out it got better but there at the very beginning, there was actually one tournament I started. I had about two and a half hours to play 18 holes. had plenty of time and ended up only being able to complete. It was like 12 or 13 holes. It wasn't, it wasn't even close because I was waiting for like 10 minutes to get a matchup. It shouldn't be that hard. See if they can get it in the hole. What I really want to do here is hit it perfect. I, I'm not even concerned if it goes in the freaking hole. I just want to hit it perfect to see where I'm at so that I can make an, make adjustments if I need to and at least know that I'm on track. Like right there, they probably needed to pull just a little bit more. Right outside the cup. Right there. So it's a uh, 3.3. It's 3.8 rings. There's three, five, six, seven, eight.
Oh, I just cannot hit perfect on this hole. That's the deal. Arr! <laughs> and and I started off at the beginning of the week and I was on the left and I've tightened this up. I'm I'm right there, like a perfect shot. I I'm not sure if a perfect would miss on the left hand side, but I am literally right there. And I don't know whether that adjustment's right because I keep being unable to hit perfect. I think my adjustments are, are are super close on a bunch of holes and it's just a matter of really going out there. It doesn't matter how well you play this game or how well you make wind adjustments or how well you know your clubs or your ball inventory or any of that stuff. If you cannot make if you cannot make perfect shots, it doesn't matter. You go through all that effort, just hit a great. Alright, I'm torn on this hole because this hole is Yesterday I had an issue on this hole, and I I could have recovered, but I instead of instead of just recognizing and and this is me not taking my own advice. When you end up in trouble on a shot, the next shot, your number one goal is to get back on track. Now sometimes you may end up in the rough out here. You got a perfect shot. You can go for it. If you make a great wind adjustment, you still got just as good a chance if you're in the rough. But there are some times when you're in the rough, especially on these par fives, where getting to the green and recovering and getting your eagle and moving on to the next hole is more important than pressing your luck and trying to make a bad situation good. And what happens most times is people will make that bad situation worse. And they could have recovered if they would have just bagged the chance for Alvy and just got up on this side over here so they could make a chip or make a putt, get their eagle and move on to the next hole. You didn't get to the spot that you wanted. And I didn't do that yesterday. I ended up in the rough. Where the hell was I? I was thinking, I think I was up here in the rough. And I was able to get a bounce here with my Nirvana and get over, but I really was pressing the issue with where I was at to try and really go for Alvy and ended up getting caught up in the rough on the other side of the sand. So in one-on-one -on -one play, I hit this with the rock from the Pro Tees. I end up getting somewhere out in this range right here. With a Marlin, you can get to this area right here with your sniper and you can get a birdie or an eagle. Super easy. It's 100% accurate club. You'd have to hit it good in order to fail if you start off in the middle of the fairway. But if you're really trying to get down here so that you can start off on the green side and not have to do the bounce over, um, you are taking the risk that you can get caught up in this rough. And it does float to the right. So if you start off in the middle and then it starts to weave and bob to the right, the farther you go out there, the more it's going to fall to the right. And the more you get an opportunity at the very end of your shot to end up in the rough. From here, you can recover. If you get up in this rough over on this side, you're in a little bit more trouble. So my decision here is is that do I go for the shot that's consistent? I just take out my rock, bring my sniper, bring as low a wind ball as I can, and take the shot to the cup for Albi so that I'm in that same spot every time? Or do I try and get maximum distance to go out there so that I can get a little bit closer to the green? I really want to get an Albi here, but I've gotten just as many Albies from distance as I have when I'm up close and there's a whole lot less risk and this is definitely one of those holes that you can fail on so that's the question i think i'm going to just bring my you don't need a lot of curl or excuse me side spin and i have more titans than i have kingmakers so i'm going to bring a titan and i'm just going to lay it up out there i'm I'm not interested. I, I'm more interested in being in the same spot every time so that I can really start to work the numbers from that than to have inconsistent landing spots on the end and increase my odds of ending up in the rough. If you hit perfect every time, it's not a big deal. Just go for it. But if you don't hit perfect every time, or if you're like me and you've lost your ability to hit perfect every time, you might want to... Uh, Make sure that you're, I want to give myself a shot every single time. I'm 
It will work the wind out. There's four one. Nice and easy. Getting it perfect. And just float it out there so that I can come at it with my sniper. Now from this area, I'll have to do the bounce over. If I brought a bigger club like a Guardian with the three power ball, I might be able to get over to the other side. We'll have to see where my red line's at because I might switch. I think in past tournaments I have played this hole with a Guardian because from that area I could do a nice safe drive shot, put myself in the same spot, bring a Guardian, get over to the green side. The way that it comes down on the green side, there's a sand trap, then there's a little patch of rough, and then you're going down a hill to the green. You can actually use that hill like on a lot of holes that we play where you can use the fairway as a rough bump because of how steep the hill is. That was a pretty big adjustment. And they might have did 10% on that. That was about a five, two, five, three pull. They'll like that spot a lot. See where my max club is? I'm right at max. Two six. I do two four. And I'm gonna just do a two six pull. I'm gonna do a two four pull. There's two four. I'm actually taking a little off. Isn't it perfect? Might look good. Might look good. Ha oh, ha ha! Robbed! <laughs> so from my old notes, hitting from the top of the hill up there, in the past when I've hit there, I do a straight up wind adjustment and I take off point two. Now, I will tell you that I will never demo that rough bump for you because you can push the ball forward into the fairway right there. And because of how steep that hill is coming down to the green, you can actually use this area right here. Just like on one of the par threes, the mid par three that we're playing, you can use this fairway right here to do a rough bump. And if you get your wind adjustment wrong, like this wind's not too bad because it's kind of going with this rough area. But if you had a really big headwind here or a really big tailwind, you take a big risk of either ending up in the sand or missing the fairway altogether. And I would rather use the fairway here to do the rough bump than that little teeny patch of rough. Because the last opponent I had, they just barely, you can see they just, the last opponent just barely missed the sand and that opponent just barely made the rough. I'm not a fan of that rough bump. You can see how steep that hill is. You can use that to your advantage. All right, I was robbed. I should have had my caddy down there pull the pin. When you're on, in real golf, when you're on the putting surface, you have to pull the pin. If you are on the putting surface and you hit the flagpole because you didn't pull the pin, that's actually a penalty. But when you're off the, off the green, you can have your caddy man the flag and pull the flag when you've taken the shot. Because sometimes when you're out on the course, you can't see the hole, so they'll man the flag for you and then they'll pull it. All right. It's a draw. That is not what I wanted to have on that hole. Arr, I think those first three holes, we got three serious opportunities. I mean, you literally could come out of the first three holes, three up right there. All right, hole number four. What is hole number four? Hole number four is a par three, and this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some numbers in my, I'm going to do a 15% wind adjustment. Now, yesterday, the way the wind was blowing, I did a 15% wind adjustment. I hit it perfect, and I over-pulled it because the wind was 
on let's go look at this hole hole number four so great opportunity here in past tournaments the winds in my recollection in past tournaments that we've played this hole and we've played this hole several times in tournaments is the wind has been blowing like this i think we had one tournament where it might have been blowing like this but it's been in this zone and we may have had one where we had a slight headwind or we had you know or it was like the, it, but it's been in this range what we had yesterday was a wind that was blowing like this. We had almost a due tailwind. And I did my 15%, which was what I would do on these, but I over pulled it probably by a good 10%. So instead of 15, I should have did, I, I may have done a, I should have did a five or I may not have had to do any. So I'm kind of confused <clears throat> on and I know that when we have this varying wind, we're going to have to chase the wind around a little bit. We're going to have to adjust based off of the wind. This is one of the reasons why it's so important to film yourself when you're playing so that you can go back and see how the ball reacted in that wind. And it'll help you make decisions on different wind directions. So I'm... Let's see what kind of wind we got. I'm taking a Nav and a Grizzly. And I'll make my determination right then. I, if the, we're getting the same kind of win I was getting yesterday, I'm only going to do a 5%. And a Navigator. You could help yourself out here by bringing... Are these Pinata balls? Are they one power? There's a, Where's the Olympus ball? Do I have any of those left? Olympus ball. This is the ball right here that you could replace that with. Now, you don't really need the three side spin, but uh, I think that might be the only one power low wind ball that I have. I can switch those out on the weekend round. Help myself out a little bit. Now we're going to go through the... I need to put the elevator music back on. I'll spare you guys. I and gals. Thank you ladies for watching the channel. We're trying to keep it clean and safe for everybody. YouTube, about a year ago, the whole YouTube thing where when you post videos, now you have to put on there that this is not made for kids. I'm not sure whether I'm not sure why how that would affect my stuff. I literally in this game, I think I I don't have in my demographics. I I don't know that there's anybody who's listed as under 18. I don't think that number on mine is if it's over a percent. I think it's less than that. I'm not sure that there's any. I don't think that ball is going to respond right. I don't like the fact that that ball guide's going that far through the hole. This is one of those holes that if, because we're doing that type of rough bump down there, it can, especially with this kind of wind. Paradise Island ball. Hitting it great to the right. Yeah, it looked like it was going to roll out. Okay, it's four backspin. Let's just do that right off the bat. Okay, it's 4.5. It's 4.72 rings. And there's 4.5. There's 4.72. Getting it perfect? Get in the hole! Might be there. Oh, and I didn't pull it enough on that. I probably should have did a 10% instead of the 15. I didn't like the way that it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have mattered anyways, even if I got it right. It might have hit the flagpole and went in, but uh, definitely just a little too much speed on that. 
Arr. And the deal there is, is that it's not pulling it back so that you don't have that much. It's pushing it forward so it digs in a little bit more when it's going down through there. And to be quite honest with you, if I would have did a little bit bigger percentage, I probably would have hit the right spot and my speed would have been a little bit better because that wind was pushing me forward. Sup. Good game. Good luck in the tournament. Feel real good on that hole. I mean, I have hit, and, and everybody has. Anybody who's played the game a lot and, and has played that hole in tournaments, that is a hole-in-one hole. I mean, that is a hole that we really, really want to make sure we can get our stuff right. So I'm not too um, bummed out about that hole yet. But in the weekend round, we really want to make sure we got our crap together on that hole. All right, hole number five. Hole number five. All right, this is another hole I'm doing. I'm going to do, I'm, in, I'm doing a max over power hook shot on this hole. Bear with me. Taking my bag number five, and I'm taking a katana. Now that's a two power, three side spin, two wind. Let's see here. Those pinata balls, those are two power, three side spin, four wind. Two power, three side spin, four wind. In this particular case, that might not be a bad ball to, to bring it out. What I'd really like, and I don't think I have any, are the ones that give you extra topspin, like a two power. And I don't know why they'd come out with those, but this, this hole might not be bad. <laughs> All right, here we go. I got to work this spot out here based off the wind. This is just like hole number one. I thought we've been getting headwind here. And so I have to address the headwind. If we're getting tailwind here, this the setup is going to be a little bit different. About three rings. So like where I'm going to set it up right here with this wind versus where I would set it up if I had tailwind is literally I would set it up three rings to the right with tailwind. Albatross rocking. Now, I take a big risk on this hole doing this max over power hook shot because this is one of those holes that if you screw up on this chasm out here, if you get it wrong in the fairway and you get it wrong, you could very easily end up in the chasm in the water and you are in big trouble. Just like my opponent is in big, big trouble. They're in the sand, they're all the way to the bottom. In my opinion, you probably have a better shot from down there. All right. Max everything. I'm going to be... Bottom of that rock. And that area right there. Three miles an hour, that's two rings. And I got all of it. As long as I can hit the fairway right here, excellent. Nice, nice. And I don't end up in the rough over there. Very nice, very nice. All right, I'm doing 10% to the cup. Now, I will tell you, I love Spitfires, but I would definitely want to know where the hell I was at in my club right there because rough iron, sand, wedge, and wedge are different. So I have no idea where they're at in their club, but I can tell you that max club, it's about two per ring. Three-quarter club, it's about three per ring. Mid club, it's about four per ring. So, I mean, it's going to change depending on where you're at in your rings. And so it's super important to find that number out. That was a very nice effort.
Nice shot. Very nice effort. Where am I at in my club? I'm right at max. I'm in about max club. Okay, 2.8 two rings. There's three, two. Getting it perfect. Get in the hole. No, that's not a good graphic. <laughs> in and out. That's two holes. In and out. Got my speed a little wrong there. <clears throat> my speed would have been right. That have been in the hole. And that's just like the other hole. I got my speed a little bit wrong. In and out on two holes. That was a 10% adjustment plus 0.2. And that was all about speed. Trajectory was fine. Could have been a little bit more to the right, but that might have been the point too. If I'd have hit the flagpole, I would have went in the hole. In the hole. All right. Two holes in and out. I like it. That gives me encouragement because I'm, you know, the deal is, is that that's, that's a technical thing. That's all about speed. If you watch my stuff on a regular basis, on these holes when you're taking that shot going to the cup, it's all about speed. It's like the shootouts. It's much better to, to stop where you're at the shortest distance to the cup. And unfortunately, urgh, but that's, that's good. That's all right. All right. This is another one of those holes that you can get in a spot of bother. This is another one of those holes that in one-on-one -on -one play, I usually play it with a quarterback and just try and lay it up right in this area. Now the problem with doing that is if you've got a zero power ball, a marlin, you're going to have to bounce from here and come up. If you bring a bigger ball, you might be able to get over into this area. you got to get quite a ways up in there in order to get your red line far enough. Yesterday I came up and I was about three and a half, I had about three and a half ranks to my red line, but the wind was blowing this way. And I didn't have enough room to work the wind out to try and do that rough bump. And I really do not want to do a rough bump where I've got to worry about uh, headwind. Hold on one second. All right, I'm back. What to do, what to do. You really, if you bring out a big enough ball and you fail anywhere down here on the bottom, you can recover. It's when you get up here at the top, if you screw up at the top, you are in big, 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 big trouble. All right, let's get down there and try that rough bump. I'm going to try it. I'm going to... All right, let's try that rough bump. All right. What do I want to bring here? Really, what I should be bringing is a kingmaker. Not because I need the side spin, but because it does help the win. But I'm going to bring a titan once again because I have them. And they're the king of balls. Why wouldn't we always think titan? When you just absolutely, positively have to get there. Choose titan. Nine out of ten golf class golfers say that Titan's the king of balls. That tenth person is actually somebody from Golf Rival, and they're coming over here, and they're uh, they're a plant. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. I'm, I'm gonna pull that. Okay. I was getting ready to pull the freaking elevator music out. And they got a, they got afraid. They got scareded. DJ Rambo. Pop 
power four. See if my opponent can get out there. Oh, I did about that much curl yesterday and it wasn't enough. I should have did a little bit more. My opponent's right down the middle. They'll be in a nice range to, uh, especially with, a, with that ball, they'll be in a very good range for the rough bump. Switch to bag number one. Two seven. It's two one. And I'm going to do that much right there. And put some curl on it to bring it back to the fairway. Hitting it perfect. Pretty close to where my opponent's at. That's funny. From these distances, you can, I will tell you, I don't know, I'm not exactly sure on the shot to the cup. And I, this is where I was at yesterday. I didn't have enough room to work out the win and I really, really, really don't like doing, I, this is a straight up headwind, water, sand. Man, these are tough rough bumps if you don't know what kind of wind adjustment you should be doing and I have no idea. I mean, as far as elevation, there shouldn't be any. But as far as like getting past that headwind. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying right there. And I don't think I'm far enough forward to get... See where my red line is. I could work the wind out if I do that rough bump. It's three six. I'm gonna do at least I'm gonna do a ten percent adjustment, so I'm gonna do four rings. Uh, one ring right to the right. Oh, I thought that was perfect. Damn it. It felt perfect. I'll have to go back and watch that because that was definitely, I hit it great to the right and if I would have had a little bit more speed on it, that would have, uh, that would have been in the hole. And the way the wind is blowing was the 10%. I didn't need to do the 10%. I could have just did a straight up shot against that headwind. I'll have to go back and really watch that shot. And, and what I'm really concerned about is where my first bounce was. Yesterday, I didn't get quite enough distance out there on one of the shots that I took and I couldn't, uh, I could not do that rough bump. In the hole. Eagle. All right. All right. That's two shots in and out of the hole, and that's one shot. Come up a little bit short. But that hole, that shot right there coming up a little bit short, not having hit it perfect, I still have some work to do there, but that'll be uh, pretty good information, especially for the back. So what I normally do is I'll shoot the front and then I'll go back and watch these videos and see how it responds. But now that we're not getting the same wind from one round to the next, it's not, uh, you don't get quite as good information as you used to. Oh, number seven. 
All right, we're in the final three. I got to pick something up here. All right, I'm trying to get over into this area by cur by max curling it over this. What I keep doing is it's so hard to get that that bounce to come over without clipping the rough. And if you do, because you got to come so far forward in order to get to the a spot where you can catch it, you take the risk of bleeding off out into this area. It's a fine line. Let's check out my club selection here. Now I have, I have something in this account that I don't have in my practice account. I'm using an apocalypse in my practice account, but here I've got, still got 83 curl. I'm just wondering with the 100% top spin, whether I can get my bounces over. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try this with a big topper. Let's switch this bag. I'm not using a big dog on any hole in this tournament. I'm gonna start with that bag right there and then we will go from there. I'm also not sure that I need to bring out a Kingmaker. Distance wise, I think I can bring out a Katana on this. What's important here is the three side spin. What would be even more important would be four side spin. And I think the only four side spin ball that I have is the open ball. And I don't really need four power. And here's the problem. In order to get all the top spin on, I can't get on all the side spin. So I can with my Apocalypse, but not with the big topper. So I'm not sure the big topper will actually work. That difference in that difference in top spin with a big with the apocalypse, I can put on max top spin and max side spin. But I'm not going to be able to do that with that big topper. We'll try it. Well, I'm going to see what it looks like. If I don't like it, I'll just hit it into the sand. If not, we'll switch to back number five. For some reason, my big topper in my Prox account is level six. My big topper here is level seven, and I was thinking that the level seven got more tops or more uh, curl, but it doesn't. doesn't pick up any of its last curl until you get it to level eight which is it takes what 384 cards to get your club to get a club from zero to level seven and it takes 400 to get it from level seven to level eight so I've been playing for 18 19 20 three and a half years Now, granted, I haven't played anything higher than Tour 7 with this account, so I'm not getting those big chests that you would get. Now, yesterday I played this hole, and this was the win we have, and I like this win, but you cannot... And this kind of wind hit anything because you're so close up there to try and get as much distance as you can. You can't afford to hit anything great to the right. And I did. It's not a big deal. You can recover from there, but you have no shot. You just need to recover. Just get up there and get your, your birdie and move on to the next hole. My opponent will like that shot. I got three possibilities from there. Three ways to come at it. See how much top spin I can get on. It's plus two. That's three five. I'm gonna do there's three eight. Perfect. You want to get as close as you can to the rough right here. 
It's about as close as you can get to make it over, and then I'm going to end up in the rough. <laughs> Need a little teeny bit more curl, or a little teeny bit more side spin, or a little teeny less topspin, but you can't really put on less topspin, because if you put on less topspin, you won't make it over. It needs more curl. That's why I've been using an apocalypse, but what happened right there is I was able to get more topspin on, so I actually had a better chance of making it all the way over. It's the catch 22. Okay, they got a sniper 100% accurate, 3 8 wind. I have no idea where they're at in their club. That was 3 3. So if they were counted as 1 1 1 per ring, that was 3.5 rings. That might be in. Might be good. Nice shot. Nice shot. Okay, I'm gonna do 10% to the cup. First thing we need to do is find out where I'm at in my club. 3.7. Okay, there's max. Let's get where I can see all the stuff. There's max, there's mid. There's three quarters. It's about three per ring. Put a little bit of backspin on it, just to control it. So I'm in the three per ring range, and I'm going to do a four mile an hour pull. Okay, there's three. There's four. Ah! Oh! Good game. Good game. I've had some success on all of the par fours this week, but I haven't had a round where I've been able to pick them all up. This is one of those types of courses. There's some of these courses where you can like really, really put a hurting on these par fours, but these par fours that are in this particular course, there are some tough par fours here to try and get yourself in the right spot so you have that super good. Now where my opponent is at, obviously you can get over to those areas and work that shot out. I'm just trying to have some fun, damn it. If you can't have fun, why are we playing? Alright. This hole right here, let me think for one second. think for one second here hold on one second all right I had to go back and watch the video to see what happened yesterday I slightly under pulled it yesterday and one-on-one -on -one I play this hole from the top of the hill and I'm playing from the second tee from back in here playing from the top and in one-on-one -on -one, I always do a plus 30 percent and it from here it only takes be, depending on which way the wind's blowing, anywhere between one and two tops. But I'm hitting it from down here from the front tee, and so it's playing a little bit different. I started the week off with a 0% adjustment, just to see where it was at, and recognized that I needed to do some. So I went to 10, and was still off. Still under pulled it. So I'm going to change that to a 20, plus 20, and we'll see where we're at. I'm still trying to dial this hole in. Yes, I could have a bunch of practice accounts and practice all this stuff. And then when you, this is what a lot of the streamers do. They have a whole bunch of practice accounts. And what they do is they play a bunch of those practice accounts before they post any videos or stream any videos. And then by the time they do it, they're all like, yeah, this is it. And everybody's like, man, these guys really know how to play. And they really know how to play because they went out there and they practiced those shots so they could get it all dialed in before they start posting videos. Dumbass me. I just got there and play and try and figure it out. Because I'm trying to help everybody out there try and figure out how to set up shots. And if you're off, you know, being critical and filming your own stuff and trying to help you get it done. Okay, sniper. Man, I'm going to bring... It doesn't really matter. They all have a sniper on them. Katana. In. 
All right, let's see if we can make a hole-in-one on this hole. I have made a few hole-in-ones on this hole, but this is not, has never been a high percentage hole-in-one hole for me. And there's another hole in this golf clutch that looks very, very similar to this hole right here, and I can't remember what course it's on. We had it in a tournament the last time we had that hole in a tournament. I dicked around on that hole all week long. And any time I hit the ball great to the right, I went in the hole. And I kept making adjustments to try and pull the ball over, and then I'd hit a great to the right, and i go, okay, now this one's going to miss. And then, bam, I'd be in the hole. And I did that all week long. I hit like three shots great to the right, and I made three hole-in-ones, and any time I hit it perfect, it didn't go in. <laughs> so in the weekend round, I finally just said, screw it, and I... I hit, I purposely hit them right and hit perfect. I purposely hit them right and didn't make a damn one in the hole. Okay, it's going to be three rings. Okay, there's one, two, three rings. That was me. That was anticipation. Anticipation. That was two rings great to the left. That was like, that was two rings plus about 75,000. That was pure anticipation. What the hell ball is that? Power two, two side spin, five wind. Two, four, five. Man, that's a waste of a great four side spin ball. I mean, oh, they're doing the rough bump. I'm not a fan of doing rough bumps on, on areas like that right there. That's not my, uh, my cup of tea. Now, if I could pull out and get my entire orange ring in the rough right there, it might not be bad. Hitting it perfect. Let's see if we get two opponents in a row that can sink shots on us. In the hole. Whoo! <laughs> oh, sheesh. That was nice. In the hole. All right. No dice. I don't even remember that ball. I don't remember that ball at all. <laughs> Maybe that's the new one. Maybe that's why I don't remember it, because it's the one that's for sale right now. Let's check that out. Is that the ball that's for sale right now? No, it's the ruby ball. What is that? 353. Well, I'll tell you, that might now, once again. I was thinking on that one hole. All right, all right, all right. Hole number, are we on here? Are we on hole number nine? Are we on hole number nine? I think we are on hole number nine. We are on hole number nine. Let's go check out hole number nine. This hole right here. It's, this is this is one of those holes, it's one shot at a time. If you don't end up in that shadow or on the fairway on your drive and end up in this area, you are screwed. You can come at it from this direction over here and do come at it from this direction. If you have a lot, if you don't mind taking blind curl shots and one-on-one, -on -one, this is the only way I play. But the best that you can get is an eagle. One of these days, I will hit an Albie going this direction, and I will tell you right now, it'll be the luckiest shot that I've ever shot in this game. If you want to have an Albie shot, you need to get up into this area so that you can go at it. You don't have to get all the way up here. You don't have to get past the shadow. You just need to get to the shadow. That's the ideal area.
but it is it is a dangerous shot getting over there and the question here is, is I used to play this hole exclusively with my quarterback I don't need the distance on the rock but the top spin you can get in a little bit of trouble because if you do hit it a little bit off you can bleed off onto the rough on the right hand side so I'm going to just take my rock it'll be fine I'm going to take a kingmaker. Let's buy some kingmakers. Let's select it. I'm going to take that bag. And I am ready to roll. We'll see what that deal is on the way to the cup. In past tournaments, we've had crosswind here. And with crosswind, we needed to do a little bit of an adjustment. But I think today, at least this first time through, I think we've got a little bit of tailwind. I think when I did this yesterday, I actually over pulled it a little. If I can get a phone, don't matter. I'm going to pull that. No, okay. See, I was getting my phone out. I scared him. I was getting my phone out. I was going to play that elevator music again. Make them look like deebs, dweebs. Tokaja. Sporting some color. Put some jewelry on. Nice. See how that works. I didn't really like the way that they set that up. But they got a great result. Nice shot. Nice shot. I'm going to do a three ring pull. Put a little bit of curl on it to bring it back towards the shadow. Hit it one ring great to the right, which is really bad. <laughs> the only thing that might save me here is the curl. I put that curl on it, and so while it did hit one ring great to the right, it was still, because of the curl, it was still forcing the ball to go to the left. The goal is to get in there far enough that you can engage just the tiniest sliver of backspin, because then you can control the ball a little bit. And it does, this ball guide is lying its ass off. If you run that all the way up to the cup, it will run long. A little less than four or five. See, if you set this shot up, you don't need to use curl. Anytime you add curl into a shot, that's a huge variable that you have, you know, because it, it's just very hard to replicate. Here we go. Let's get an Albi right here. Let's get an Albi. And I want to put on just the barest sliver of backspin. Going right at it. It's 4.1 rings. Four and a little. Of course. Of course I can't hit it perfect. Why would I ever want to hit a shot perfect? Let's see if I have my distance right. That's 
that's the key right there. Distance was, I might have been just a little short. The trajectory to the cup if I'd hit it perfect is actually just a, a little bit shorter, but that would have been real close to being not quite enough. All right, nice clean front. Several shots that were in and out of the hole. Couple close calls, did pick up one. Minus 13 is not going to get it done. You're gonna have to shoot a minus 28 plus if you wanna be up towards the top. That's just the, the way it is. So you are gonna have to pick up two per side and shoot the minimum score. So right there, I'm gonna have to pick up three on the back in order to uh, get myself just to the 28. And if you wanna be up towards the top, you're gonna have to shoot a 28 plus. I mean, there's just no way around it. In some brackets, it's gonna be worse than that. But if you wanna have any shot at all, you're gonna have to start with a 28 and then try and work from there. Front nine, clean. Um, was able to get some of the shots that I'm working on, like on hole number one and hole number five where I'm doing the max overpower hook shots. I feel pretty good about those. Didn't get the uh, eagle on hole number five, but uh, some of that's not hitting perfect shots. Some of that's getting in and out of the hole. <laughs> Bouncing in and out. That was one of them. Hole number three and hole number five. In and out. All right. That was the front nine of the Winter Sun Tournament in the opening round of the Ricky Division. Thanks for watching.